portion of this video is sponsored by the AnchorWork M650. So this is our Rivian R1S launch edition. And by ours, I mean my wife's. Uh, we've had it for about five months. We've got about six-ish thousand miles on it. And there's been a lot of coverage on the R1S, but not that many are from like actual owners who've driven this car every single day, use it with kids, load it up, see what it can do and see how it performs over a long period of time. And obviously five months is a small sample size, but I got a lot to say. I want to kind of share all those thoughts with you. We got this the whole people. Let me show you the people hauling part of it. And this is like literally just how her car looks. She, she asked me to ask you guys to please not judge. We got three kids. We got this in November and we've had, it's rained pretty much one day every week since then. So you haven't been able to get it washed. So this is a real used um, car. First thing I'm gonna say, uh, we got rubber mats for it. It doesn't come with rubber mats, but uh, we got them. And then the day I installed them, like three hours later, my daughter got a stomach flu and threw up all over the floor mats. So rubber mats uh, are it's a, uh, I mean, just like exorcist <clears throat> all over. Um, okay, so three rows in the side. Actually, if you come around here, it'll be easier to show you. So it's a three row, it's a bench. I think I would have liked, and we would have liked a lot more if it was captain chair, so you can climb through. But having the extra seat is really nice to get to it, to push it down. You gotta come back here, push it away. And then that comes down is, is nice to have. My son can kind of crawl right in there. To get to the third row, there's a button right here. And you're like, oh, that's awesome. You push the button and it just slides. You can get in really easily. Like I said, this is a, it's a used car. We, we live in this car. But then when you wanna push the seat back, you figure it would go right back to where it was. This is a very weird design thing with the car. If I push this back, it just goes like the seat back is straight up and it's not back where it was. So then you have to come through. You got to move the seat back to where it was. And then since nobody sits like that, unless you're a monster, you have to go back and manually adjust it, which is really annoying. That's why he crawls through the middle or will crawl through uh, to the back. So I'm in the third row. I mean, this is all the way back. So like my knees are there. If I push it forward, there's more room. The nice thing about sitting in the third row though where my son sits because I always have access to um, dirty floor snacks, which is gross. Anyway, then trying to get out of here as an adult. That's where it gets tricky. Oh, all right, we're gonna try this. Here we go. Okay, push this button here. Kind of goes forward, there we go. All right, was that as graceful as it looked? <laughs> felt, felt graceful. So I love the split thing here. It's very similar almost exactly the same to what Range Rover has, except unlike Range Rover, this part is all manual. I would have liked this to have been uh, powered, would have been nice, and we can just climb right in here. So, ton of storage here in the back. And again, with the third row, is half of it up. A lot of space here. You've got a sub trunk under here. If you have a spare tire, it's a little one, it can go underneath there. There's a little tray that usually comes here. We took it out just to have, I guess, more space to store jackets. <laughs> Seems like what's happening in there. Um, there's a bit of a gap here, but you can push this up and you get a flat loading floor if you want. Um, some of the things that I love in the R1T are also here in the R1S. So you've got uh, outlets here. You can control the third row seats powered down, but not up. I would have liked that to have been up. And then air compressor, which is awesome. And then the hose for the air compressor I've got hidden in the jacket compartment down there. Um, so third rows I mentioned, power down but to get the third row up i mean you literally gotta like do a whole this thing get in there and then you gotta push the button and lift it up like it's not like it's not easy you gotta do this whole thing uh there is room in the third row though so i'm a i like to say 510 but that's being generous i could fit back there for short road trips uh, my son, though, who is seven, fits back there great. It's more for kids. Uh, it does have latch points back there, too. So if you're looking to have you know, car seats buckled in, the third row does have that. All right. Put this back so my wife doesn't get mad at me. So throughout this video, when I'm like outside near the car, probably noticing this circa thing. They're trying to keep eye contact with me. Uh, this is the M650 by Anchorwork. It's an external microphone setup. It's been absolutely, in fact, all the audio outside has been done with this thing. So you can hear what it sounds like. We're outside, there are like people cutting grass over there. There's planes flying overhead. The audio quality has been absolutely awesome. 
There's a bunch of things that have made this a really perfect setup for vlogging, doing shoots like this. You can clip them on, they're magnetic, so I have this magnetized under my shirt. Uh, it's got a receiver that has a magnetized adapter for either lightning or USB type C. You can monitor the audio levels and it's just in a little box with the battery built in. It's kind of everything you need. So the marketing term for the tech, it's got voice radar, voice shield, true link and magic sight. So when you have that going on and you're trying to record audio, it still ends up sounding surprisingly good. So it's called the M650. You can actually record audio uh, 650 feet away. So if you're recording a, a car, you're fine, but you can go for distance. Uh, and have it still sound really good. So one thing that I did want to show was compare the microphones with the Anchor Works to just a regular iPhone microphone. So I got two cameras rolling. Uh, one is a 14 Pro. Uh, the other is also a 14 Pro, but with the Anchor Works microphone connected to it. So you can hear the audio. So I'll cut back and forth so you can hear different to see what it sounds like, background noise. It's kind of a breezy-ish day here in Southern California. Just give a sense of the audio fidelity that you're getting uh, with the Anchor Works mic. So the microphones themselves have six hours battery life, but with the case, uh, you get 15 hours battery life. It's pretty awesome. And the, the case is like what you'd expect from like a modern case. You drop everything in, it connects via magnet, charge everything for you. Then you can charge a case via USB-C and then that'll charge all the peripherals. So the two microphones, receiver, and everything that needs uh, the needs juice. But it's just been a really good setup. So I thought the best way to test it is actually to use it for this video. So you can be the judge of how it sounds. If you want to check out the M650s for yourself, We'll link to them down below. Now here are some thoughts that my wife has had, and she's the one that drives this every single day. Uh, and she's coming from a Honda Odyssey minivan. I needed a big car. I knew I wanted to go electric. Uh, just gas prices, the accessibility, you know. Um, I just knew I needed a big car, and this one really checked all the, all the all the marks. Car's been really good. Yeah. But it's not perfect. Like, what are no. some of the things that have not been like perfect about it for you? Um, there, like, really are just a few. I mean, I am on the shorter side, so the car is tall, and if I am wearing heels or yeah, fitted dress or skirt, it is <laughs> it's a hike to get in yeah. the car, even with it being in the kneeling mode. So I mean, like having like how some of the larger SUVs have a step that comes down, yeah. that would have been helpful. A lot of questions about build quality. And this one is an early VIN R1S. This is like in the 800, so a little bit nervous. I was actually really surprised with the build quality all around. Um, there were some things we still have to get fixed. Uh, we took delivery. I didn't like this piece right here. It seemed a little off, a little, it can probably be just pushed in. But we did like a real thorough walkthrough. It looked pretty good. One area that I thought was a problem with the car. But then I went to the Rivian showroom and they all had it. Is this gap down here? Um, that looked like a panel misalignment, but it's actually just for the tailgate uh, to come down. Every other R1S I've seen uh, when I went to the Rivian lot had that, so. So like every pretty much post Tesla uh, electric car, it uses a card as a key fob too, or your phone as a key. In my R1T though, for me, my phone has a key. It unlocks really quickly, my wife, um, it's telling me all the time that it, it doesn't unlock fast enough for her when she gets to the car. She has to go to her phone, open it up, sometimes unlock it, maybe about 15, 20% of the time. Assuming that's gonna be a software thing, but it is something that appears to be unique, at least for her, uh, when it comes to the R1S. So how does it handle like a Costco run? Uh, incredibly well. It, I've bought a ton of stuff there um, between the trunk, the sub trunk, the front trunk, the sub front trunk. There's endless spaces it seems and i keep the third row one of the seats folded down because we only use one of them most of the time so i still have all that space and if they could make an option for captain chairs right now we have the middle seat folded down and they they walk through but on days when they have muddy shoes like after it's been raining it's kind of gross and i feel like ah the carpet's gonna get all dirty and gross from it so captain seats would be great so this is your first electric car Yes. Do you think about range like at all? No, it's plugged in in the morning when I walked out and I unplug it, I hop in and I go about my day. And honestly, it's it's been the best blessing to not have to go to the gas station on a weekly basis or two times a week because I was just blowing through gas so fast it with, with the van yeah. and the driving that I do. 
essentially from the B pillar forward, it's the exact same car as the R1T. We have a huge video up on the R1T, but in case you didn't see that, you should go back and watch it. But under here, it's powered front, which I love. It's a big boy front, like it's real huge. Comes this little net for storage stuff, and you got a sub front under there as well. You got the charging cable and field kit. Unlike, say, the Lightning or the Hummer EV, this whole part doesn't open up with it, so it's an enclosed space. There is a drain plug in there, so you can use this front for tailgating. If you want to put some drinks or ice in there, it's kind of cool. But then fully powered as well, which I really like. Uh, I wish it had something unique. Like the R1T has the gear tunnel. I love the gear tunnel. I wish there was something like super special that this had. Um, it doesn't, but that's cool. It's all right. Front of the car is polarizing. I don't love those stacked headlights. They kind of look like little Tylenol pills to me, but it's subjective. I don't mind it. It didn't stop me from obviously getting two of the cars. Um, so let's get in. Let me show you some of the stuff uh, inside. The seats on the R1S and the R1T are crazy comfortable. Uh, we only have about, I think, 6,000 miles on the R1S, but I've got almost 16,000 miles on my truck. These seats are awesome. Uh, same seats in the passenger, and they're also actually the same seats on the left and right side, the passenger and driver in the second row, which is really nice. So incredibly comfortable. They also worn really well, at least in my truck, no sign of, of wear or anything. All right, so let's talk about inside uh, the car. There's like a lot happening here. Questions that I had, I was nervous about was like, how good is this going to be? And again, my perspective is coming from uh, the Lucid Air I had for a year. Uh, I haven't driven a Tesla now in uh, almost two years, so I don't know how that is, but at least that's where my comparison is coming from. Uh, this is really fast. It works incredibly well. Um, it's pretty responsive too, especially for sort of the car interface. If my recollection is right, it's not as fast as the Tesla's when you do the pinch and zoom, but it's faster than pretty much everything else that wasn't a Tesla that I've tested. How It's been great that I don't notice any slowdown uh, with it, which has been really nice. Obviously it doesn't have, you know, a supercharger network like Tesla has where you get access to it a little bit with the Magic Dock stuff. Rivian does have their adventure network, which has been nice, uh, but it'll tell you chargers as you drive by. It'll give you, so I can go there. It'll tell me the speed of the charger, how many are open. And it's been really nice to have, again, have done road trips in this. Rivian did a really good job making sure what was in here worked instead of throwing everything out here and having it not work. And hopefully the stuff that we want will be coming. So I don't have things like dash cams in here yet. I do have things like gear guard though that can record when the car is parked, but hopefully those kind of things will come. But if you were worried about this not working well or being a dog, don't. Um, other things I hope come, I hope we can get to watch you know, Netflix or be able to watch movies on the screen. Uh, but again, not here yet. Actually, when it comes to dash cam, the CEO, RJ Skaran, replied to my tweet saying that it was indeed coming. One thing this does have that I really like is 360 cameras. This is actually something that my wife really wants to have. And you can see obviously all around you. I know it's a polarizing issue, especially on the Tesla world. Everybody tells me they don't need it, they don't need it. But it is really nice to have. My wife likes to have it. And we're buying a car for her. I wanted her to make sure we try to get as close to uh, what she wanted. See the front camera there? It's a bit of a potato camera. There's a software update that's supposed to be coming that should improve that a little bit. But I mean, you can see what's in front of you, but. You know, it's not going to win any awards. Uh, the rear camera has gotten a lot better. It's still a little potato cami, um, but it's fine. Don't have things here. If I turn the signal on, I don't get to see my um, blind spot, which I like that Tesla has and Lucid has. And I think a lot of the uh, Hyundai Kia cars have. Hopefully that's coming uh, as well. All right, so let's talk interior build quality. New car company, a lot of nerves here. And this is the same thing that I saw in my truck, but I'm going to go ahead and do the, the default like ASMR thing here. I'm just going to push. Build quality has been like really good. I mean, surprisingly good. I can I can push all the stuff if you want, but build quality has been absolutely awesome with the car. Hasn't been flawless with some of the stuff though. These little triangle windows um, on the passenger and driver side let in a decent amount of wind noise, so we have to get that uh, fixed. Evidently, Rivian knows that's a problem and they're going to take care of it. We have an appointment, I think in like two months, uh, to get that taken care of. Sort of the last issue that we've really had with the car, this is a minor thing. Um, when the car's been asleep and I walk up to it with my phone key, the car creaks like my knees in the morning. Uh, I asked Rivian what that was and they said it's kind of adjusting with the air suspension, waking up and they think it's something that could be fixed with software, but it sounds like this when I walk out to the car um, in the morning.
Hear it? Sounds like creaky knees or a long fart. I think it's the... Oh, it's done yet. I imagine it's the air suspension, but uh, doesn't sound that great. Big open storage area here. At least it would be open, I guess, if you didn't have... I don't know what everything that's happening here. But there's a, there's a big open space. Uh, cup holders are here. They're actually pretty good. Then you've got the speaker built in there. We covered that in the Arwen uh, T review. It's been handy to have daughter sunglasses here. I don't think I rock them as well as she does. So this MagSafe thing here is not native to the car. It pulls up. I have it plugged inside. There's a, I don't want to pull it off, but there's, there's wireless coils underneath there, but it's like impossible to get your phone to line up. So this is an aftermarket thing that works great. Magnetizes and you can charge your phones there or anything else in those little areas. So right now I've got, I love you can see both. 75%, 219 miles of range, usually doing 85% uh, percent charge. There was software update that gave it an extra like 10 miles. I found some inefficiencies. It was really nice to have. So again, having a lot of miles on a Rivian truck, this drives a lot better than the truck. And the truck I think drives great, just it's smaller than it. So just by that nature, it's a little more fluid uh, and fun to drive. It is quick. I don't think a car this size any business driving as well as this does. So Rivian recommends you charge to 85%, which I'm at right now. You can see right down there, it's actually 86%. And I've got 249 miles. I think that's enough for you. Maybe it's not. Um, what I found is that range that they tell you there is pretty close to the range that you actually get. It's not like the EPA estimates you'll get this far. It's pretty accurate. At least the most accurate of uh, electric cars that I've had. Uh, different drive modes here. So if I put it, let's say, turn the car on. If I put it in conserve, it actually turns off two of the motors. And then my 249 will jump to about 270. And when I put that up to 100, it's about 300 miles in conserve. Uh, again, if you get the smaller road wheels, you get more range. We have the probably unnecessary off-road tires here on this car. But I want to at least talk to you a little bit about what the range is. And then if you're curious too, down here, you can see some of the charging options uh, as well. Go to energy and then um, it'll show you kind of the options you've got. So I only have 70, 85 or 100. I can't kind of slide it to control it. Uh, and it'll tell me what it's basing the range on here. I can turn the outlets in the car on and schedule charging and all that kind of stuff. JD's in the car filming. JD, I'm gonna floor it. And then you can describe the performance. Again, this isn't in sport right now. We're just gonna... Jeez. Right? It's for big. Like, it's, it's not as fast as, like, the Hummer uh, EV was, but for something that's big. It's not that fast. I wanted to talk about the driver assistance, the, the ADOS stuff. So if you can see that icon there, that is Driver Plus. Think of it like there. There it is. Uh, their version of Autopilot. Now, if you can't tell, you got to be right in the middle of the lane. If you veer off to a little bit, it'll turn off. But if you come back it'll turn back on. So I don't know where they got the idea from, but to turn it on, you just hit the stock down twice and uh, it'll start to activate. Now when it's on and working, it works well. You can control all the lanes and the speed and that kind of stuff. And it keeps you in your lane and turns. It doesn't do any like navigate and autopilot stuff. It's not gonna change lanes for you. You put on blinkers and change freeway interchanges for you. It just keeps you in a lane and keeps going. At that, it does very well. My issues that I have is that it turns off so many times. Now it doesn't just turn off randomly, it'll tell you um, toll road approaching, turning off, or merge coming, turning off. Pretty much anything that is different than just like driving straight in the lane or you know turning in a lane. So right now it's weird kind of braking because there's a car went off to the side. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna take control. Um, if you can't tell, it's not a perfect, it's not a perfect system. It works well. I'm hoping it's going to get better with software updates in my about year at the R1T. You know, like it's pretty close to the same as it was a year ago. So take that for what it's worth. But if mostly you're like autopilot usage, if you're coming from a Tesla, just like get on a freeway and put it on, this will be fine. This is like autopilot, what autopilot was like autopilot one. If that's good for you, you'll enjoy this. If you are like, I want to navigate an autopilot, I want the car to summon, and then like park itself, this is not gonna be for you. Speaking of park itself, it does not have any park itself-ish technology. So it's not gonna parallel park for you, perpendicular park for you, any of any of that stuff. So park yourself. 
but you have to check the cameras at least so you can see it. There's a lot of different versions of the R1S coming. Uh, the CEO, RJ Scarange, announced that there's a max pack with dual motor versions that are coming that can get almost 400 miles of range. I don't know what the pricing on that's gonna be, but there's certainly gonna be more options for more people. I know when it comes to electric cars, people are always saying, you know, range, uh, I need more range, I need more range. I can't speak for your use case. For our use case, it's been absolutely fine. Being able to charge on the road has not been an issue because we just charge uh, at home and now with Tesla superchargers opening up, I think it's less of an issue. Certainly Electrify America and public charging is an abysmal joke right now. Um, we have a trip planned to Mammoth later this year. We actually try some of the Rivian Adventure Network, sort of their version of superchargers. I'm excited to give that a shot. But as it stands right now, I don't have any compelling reasons, at least for our use cases, to not get the Rivian. Uh, it's expensive. It's not for everybody. But I've been really impressed five months later with this car, especially with an early VIN. The build quality, the performance, the software, and the practicality for a family of five has been absolutely amazing. I think this is the sweet spot for a lot of people. Whether you wanna haul a lot of kids, whether you wanna haul a lot of stuff, you just want an SUV to go off road with, the R1S is probably the perfect SUV for almost everybody. I'm excited for what they're gonna do next. I think there's still a lot of huge areas to improve for software, but the SUV as it stands right now is incredible, really well done, and we buy it again in a heartbeat.